You're facing it, I faced it in the past. Your digital notes app is a junk drawer. You've clipped a bunch of stuff because it was really easy to get it in there. You thought it might be useful. And now sometime later, you're faced with a bunch of digital clutter. The reason this becomes a problem is something called the collector's fallacy, which we're going to dive into in this video. Plus, I'm going to give you three major components to build into your mindset about note taking to avoid it in the future. Let's dive in. So the collector's fallacy is an idea written about by uh, Christian Tietze on the Zettelkasten DE blog. Um, let's dig into the definition of it that he has here. So he says that as knowledge workers, so people who work primarily with information, we're inclined to look for the next groundbreaking thought for intellectual stimulation. We pile up promising books and articles and we store half the internet as bookmarks just so we get the feeling of being on the cutting edge. I remember when I first started using Evernote in 2008, this is 100% the way that I use things. I love taking in new information and trying to understand it. However, I can tell you I clipped probably 50 articles on how to write a book back then, and I haven't written a book since 2008. So that's the collector's fallacy in its practice is we gather information because we want to know about something, but that's different than knowing something. Knowing something is about the practical application and use of a piece of information. Using a piece of information can be it changes your life and you apply it in a way, or you're using that information to write a research article, or like we're doing right now on this video live, is I'm using this piece of information uh, to build something, a piece of content, or to teach someone something about it. Let's go a little bit further in the article. Um, Christian talks about how this fake knowledge is hindering us on our road to true excellence. And until we merge the contents, information, ideas, and thoughts of other people into our own knowledge, we haven't really learned a thing. So he's saying here that it's not just the application of knowledge, but it's the translation of what it means to us into our own set of knowledge and what, where that fits and then therefore how we apply it. That's when we get past the collector's fallacy. And you see this next section here, he talks about collectors don't make progress. And I will tell you, this is 100% true. As someone who has defaulted to collecting for so many years and has only recently in the last five to seven years made a shift away from just collecting information to actually purposefully trying to gather it and put it in a system that makes sense for me so that I can make sense of this information. Um, it's really easy to just collect stuff, but not do anything with it or make any progress. So how do you get there? There's three legs to the stool that you need to build into your mindset that help you avoid the collector's fallacy. That's purpose or why you're learning, goals, what you're learning, and systems, how you're learning. Purpose is all about how you're showing up to the learning process. Are you there just to gather information because you're satiating some intellectual curiosity that you have or you're just keeping up with the world? Or are you there because you have a very specific idea on what you're learning? Take my book example that we just talked about. I felt inspired by the idea of writing a book and so I learned a ton about it. Most of that information has drifted out of my brain, but it still lives in my old Evernote account. But that's because I didn't really have a purpose on why I was gathering that information. I was really just kind of going off the cuff and, oh, this is really drawing my attention and I feel inspired about it. I'm reading authors that make me feel inspired to write a book but there wasn't really a defined purpose behind it. Compare that with the time that I spent as a marketing lead at a company. I hadn't done marketing at all before, but what I intentionally set out to do was I wanted to learn the ins and outs of marketing. 
I took courses, I read tons of articles, I watched videos so that I could really wrap my arms around what the heck does this company need me to build for a marketing motion? And so I took tons of notes, I came back to them, I interlaced them together through links in my note-taking software, and there's still things that I go back to in that system time and time again to refresh my memory because I spent the time to purposefully learn something in that system. And this blends really well with the idea of goals or what you're learning. Take guitar, for example. If I were just to sit down and say, I wanna learn how to play a guitar. Well, that's a really broad subject. There's things like, do you wanna play acoustic guitar or electric guitar? Do you want to lean into how to build a pedal board and develop tone and sound? Or do you wanna learn a finger picking style? Or do you, need to, do you wanna play more rhythm? Or do you wanna play more lead? If you just have a really broad idea that you wanna chase after, and it's okay to start at that point, the idea is to hone it down into a specific thing that you're trying to learn and spend intentional time learning it. So with the guitar example, lately I've been trying to learn more with electric guitar. I have played acoustic guitar primarily for over 20 years, and I wanna spend more time learning the electric guitar. So what I'm doing is I'm spending intentional time watching YouTube videos, reading articles, uh, and trying to craft the how do I play more freely on the neck, just individual notes so that it sounds good without having to think about it. That's my intentional goal. And I'm creating notes and gathering information that helps me walk toward that. There are things that I can use over and over. And the benefit of having a goal like this is that it makes it easier to organize this information because I'm going to come back to it over and over again. I know where it's going to be. I have a cluster of notes that I can group together in some way, shape, or form, and they will live that way in my system going forward. And the third leg on the stool is all about systems or how you're learning. These are things like the notes app that you choose, the habits that you build, how you're approaching the note taking and learning process. So one aspect of a system is, are you spending intentional time every week working on learning that one thing, developing and crafting the notes, integrating that knowledge into your knowledge as Christian Tietze talks about. All three of these things together give you the tools that you need to combat collector's fallacy by having a strong purpose for why you're learning, goals on specifically what you're learning so that you can more easily organize and pull notes together, and integrate it into your practice. And then the system for how you're learning so that you're spending intentional time regularly moving towards that goal and purpose. We've done a lot of talking about system building and there's a really big trap to avoid in the system building process that can slow things down. And it's over-engineering your system. So if you're interested in learning more about how to avoid over-engineering your note-taking system, check this video out over here.